The historic Gaston's White River Resort is trout central among avid anglers who live to catch river browns. The White River is situated in north central Arkansas, directly downstream of the Bull Shoals Reservoir. A constant supply of 50 degree water drains from Bull Shoals, making the White River a picture perfect trout fishery. On this week's episode, Mark Romanak of Fishing 411 teams up with legendary trout fishing guide Frank Saxa to showcase this world-class fishery. This week's adventure is early March, the perfect time of year to cast jerk baits for bruiser browns. Oh, I'll try. What a nice fish. The uh, cool thing about that is that this bugger just rocketed right out there and sm just smacked it. I got to watch him eat it. I got to watch him eat it. That's a cool thing. All righty. Oh, not time. quite ready, is he? No, not ready. There you go. Look at that. Woo, Thank that's you, a Frank. Good one, <laughs> Man, I feel like I'm on top of the world right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now that is a very representative brown from the White River. Yeah. <laughs> it's that, look at the sunshine on that fish, it's just gorgeous. Still got a few of its spawning colors left. Yes, yes. It's a, Absolutely uh, gorgeous. Man, nothing makes my heart go pitter patter better than brown trout. Look at that. Whew, baby. Time to let this buddy go. Right down in here. Oh, what a gorgeous fish. See you again sometime, my friend. Right down to the bottom. This week's episode is filmed on the White River, not too far from the town of Mountain Home, Arkansas. Now this area of the White River is renowned for its trout fishery. We came down here from Michigan to sample the big brown trout that this area has become known for. And it ain't damn giant, but it's a nice little fish. No, that's a very nice fish. That's a very nice fish. Let me get down here. Now, now. See if I can give you a little assistance on it. Yeah. Now that one hit like a ton of bricks. Now that one hit well, like That's a beautiful it. fish, man. That is just yeah. absolutely a beautiful fish. Very cool. There we go. There we go. Come around back up this way, girl. There we go. In the scoop. <laughs> Congratulations, Frank. No that problem. is a beautiful fish. Yeah. This is a nice little fish. Kind of average size fish we catch out here. It's a little female. Just finished spawning. There you go. We'll let her get back in the water. She's breathing. The presentation on the stick bait uh, is pretty universal, and I've learned this from a really good fisherman, Kevin Van Dam, actually. You always start and stop on a slack line. It's called dead sticking. 
Most of your strikes happen when that bait stopped. And I have a, people have a tendency to work the bait way too fast. And another thing about stick bait fishing on the long cast, you have to work the you rod a lot harder because there's a lot more stretch into it. So, but yeah, that's how far as the presentation is that, that there has to be some stop. There's got to be a snap, snap, stop. And the other thing people, I, I think they do make a mistake is they get real rhythmic. They go one, two, one, two, one, two. Well, you know, they're, they're looking for a wounded fish. Fish don't die in rhythm. And you got to understand what kind of, if you see a fish die, they kick, fall, kick, kick, fall. So you got to, you got to really change up your presentation as far as your cadence. You don't be rhythmic. Make sure on the end of your cast, you have a really hard snap to make it work and make sure you pause. And day to day, and, and even sometimes during the day, sometimes it takes a longer pause to get them a trick. Sometimes it doesn't. So keep, keep adjusting your, your retrieve until you start catching fish and then lock into it. That's the key thing to lock into it. Once that, on that given day, lock into whatever retrieve that's gonna get you the most strikes. Now we hooked up with Frank Saxon. Now Frank is a legendary guy here on the White River. Everybody around here knows his name and he's fished with just about every noteworthy television producer you can think of in the country. The reason we hooked up with Frank is because he knows the river and especially knows how to catch these big browns. And that's what we were after. We wanted to catch the big brown trout that the White River has become famous for. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Let's take a second and talk a little bit about the rods and reels that would be ideally suited for jerkbait fishing. First of all, if you're gonna want a rod that's probably between six and a half and seven foot long, spinning is gonna be your best choice. I recommend that you start out with about a medium action and you could get away with maybe a medium light, but you gotta remember, some of these brown trout are two, three pounds, some of them could be four, five, six pounds. So a medium action rod is gonna give you a little more power to fight those bigger fish. Now you're also gonna to wanna to team this up with a reel that's suitable in size. What I have here is a CAG-A rod that's seven foot. I have a CAG-A reel that's a 2500 series reel. And the line that I have on here is fluorocarbon, about 200 yards. And because you're using fluorocarbon, there's no special leader that you need to worry about. You can tie it directly to your jerkbait if you want, or if you prefer, you can use a small snap so you can change colors on your jerkbait quickly without having to retie all the time. This basic setup will do a great job for you catching trout, jerk baiting anywhere on the White River. Frank, I caught one of your pet Yay, fish. Yay, you got one of our little browns. That's well, good. I, I shouldn't say I caught him yet. I hooked him. So I have not uh, have not caught him yet. He's just out on a, on a flat here. Oh, yep, he's, by himself. he's on a grass flat. That's why. I, there we go. That's a start. Out here a little bit. So you can get a little bit better look at him. Yeah, there, you go. there we go. Now we're talking. Let me get this boy out of the net here and uh, and show him off a little bit. Uh, gorgeous, absolute gorgeous fish, and he just literally come unglued on it. It's amazing. These jerk baits, these fish, they just want them bad. I mean, when they hit them, they hit them with a lot of authority. That is a gorgeous looking brown there. Man, I love these things. They are pretty fish. I'm just going to get us off the bank a little bit if you can fight him there for a second. Yeah. And now I can come back down to him. Oh, right here. You're, you're being too conservative, man. That's a very good one. Yeah. A beautiful fish. Come on, puppy. Another couple inches. There we go. I can't see him. Oh, I could not catch up to him. There we got him. Right. Second time's the uh, the charm there. Now, Frank, that is a beautiful brown trout. Congratulations, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. You know, most of the time we've been catching a fish here, a fish there, but you had two fish on, two quality fish like this on, and, and like two or three casts. Yes, that's right. And every so, once in a while they bunch up, but not too often. So. I think maybe the water's warming up a little bit to get a little bit more active. Do you think it's worth going back and floating oh. over that again? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, all right. I, I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> we missed so. most of that bank. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's a beautiful fish. Congratulations, my friend. You did good on that one. We based out of a place called Gaston's White River Resort. Now, you just can't beat this place. It's absolutely gorgeous. The cottages are first rate. There's an excellent restaurant here first-class food, the service is exceptional, and of course, the fishing, it's world-class. Well, the name of this game is covering water. You know, and television has a tendency to make some fishing presentations look easier than they are. 
But in this situation, you've got to cover a ton of water, you've got to make a ton of casts in order to contact fish. The fish are here to be caught, but they don't jump in the boat. You literally have to make a thousand casts a day in order to be successful. So get your mind wrapped around a long day of making a lot of casts, and at the end, you will be successful. There you go. I'll use a brownie, but not a real big one. So. I tell you what, they all look beautiful yeah, looking fish beautiful. Yeah, you gotta look at that. That looks pretty. <laughs> Man, nice it does look pretty them, them spots on there. There you go. You're right, it's not the biggest one we've caught, but it is definitely a good nice representative. One. Oh, yeah. I think most people would be very oh, happy to catch fish like yeah, that. It's a nice little fish. That is a nice little fish, man. They're just beautiful spots on. Yeah. So, you got it going on here, Frank. I'm, uh, I'm jealous you got such a great fishery here. Yeah. <laughs> got to come here more often? <laughs> well, well uh, is that an invitation? That's an invitation. <laughs> okay, well, then I'm going to take you up on that, sir. <laughs> if you're looking for some jerkbait colors that are going to catch brown trout here, you're going to want to use things that closely replicate the natural forage. In this case, that's going to be shad. So here in my left hand, i got something called sexy shad. It's very popular with bass fishermen. also catches a lot of these brown trout. You can also brighten it up a little bit with these iridescent baits like this, and they're going to catch fish for you too, especially in gloomier conditions. So if you're thinking shad, you're probably going to catch fish. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's elite sport shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. So I'm just getting baited up here and getting ready to catch some bluegills. It's summertime and a lot of times you'll find bluegills in deep water in the summertime. This is the perfect time to target bluegills with Active Target. And the cool thing about Active Target is it's interactive. I can see these fish swimming around. I can drop straight down to them and watch them bite the bait. So the biggest difference between a live sonar and your conventional sonar that you're used to fishing is the crystals. Inside of a transducer unit are crystals. Every transducer unit has them. But in your conventional sonar unit, it, that transducer has crystals that, that don't move, they stay stationary. And what happens is you have to actually move or something has to move to create an image. With Active Target or your live sonar, you have crystals that are constantly moving. Basically what that does is create a picture, a live type image in the water. So I can sit stationary, right now I'm anchored with my Ghost Electric motor, but I can actively see these fish swimming around me and I can see my lure drop down to the bottom. And the nice thing about that is it creates a, a system where I can basically judge the attitude of these fish. Now these fish are pretty hot. As fast as I drop it down, they're biting. But if they were a little bit more lethargic, I could figure out exactly what it takes to get those fish to bite, changing lures out and that sort of thing. So the live sonar helps us read that attitude of the fish a lot easier. So I'm gonna show you right now on my Lowrance unit what it looks like with your conventional sonar unit versus live imaging like Active Target. Now right now I have a bunch of bluegills underneath me and they're just basically marked as long streaks. I've fished for a long time and I know exactly what that is and so you kind of get used to what that looks like. Now if you're new to fishing or you're trying to learn how to read your electronics, Active Target kind of takes it to a whole new level, makes it a lot easier to understand what you're looking at. All I have to do is go to my pages here and switch over to Active Target and what you'll be able to see when it pops up on the screen is you can physically see the individual fish swimming around underneath the boat. So instead of it being a stationary streak mark, you actually have individual blobs that are fish and you can actively see them moving around the boat just as they are underneath the boat. Active Target is a brand new piece of technology from Lowrance. It's a really cool interactive sonar where we can see the fish actively moving around the boat and we can see our lures below the boat, which is just a really cool feature. You know, we've been using Active Target a lot this season, whether we're walleye fishing, salmon fishing, it really doesn't matter. We're finding a lot of different applications for this live style of sonar and it's kind of changing the world and the way that we fish for all different types of species.
What a beautiful fish. Oh my goodness. Keep him down in the water. He's kind of weird oh, up there. Followed, yeah. yeah, I think he came around and swatted he, at he it. He sure did. All right. It wasn't pretty, but he came to the boat here, so. <laughs> We got an interesting talking point. You can see that fish is hooked right in the belly. It's foul hooked. And every state pretty much has the same regulations. The fish that's foul hooked has to go back. We release this fish anyway. But there was no intention here. What happened is that this fish struck at the bait and and I felt that and I set the hook and bam, nailed him right in the side. So follow hooking happens occasionally, but it's actually a fairly rare circumstance. Doesn't do this fish any permanent harm. I'm gonna unhook him, get him back in the water, and he'll be good to catch tomorrow. People don't realize they're not used to this. Very seldom the outside temperature has anything to do with the temperature of the water. Even when it's 90 degrees out, 100 degrees, it's still cold, 50. This is actually January weather. This is not, <laughs> this is not March weather. Well, there's good news. I can feel my fingers again. Yes, we're over the hard part. This from now on is gonna be pretty easy stuff. Just as we stay, Keep that bait in the water, keep it flashing, keep it pausing. You never know what's gonna happen. You never know what size either. You can catch. So the one I just caught there, how would you describe that? An average fish, above yeah, it's average? About an average fish, yeah. That's that's where we we seem we catch a lot of that size fish and then the fish once they get a little bigger than that, they get a little bit wiser, a little little you know, a little bit harder to get the trigger. But this is the time, this is when the water's high is when you got that chance. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Daiwa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. It's a small one. Listen, I'm guessing this might be one of your rainbows. Yeah, rainbow or tiger. Tiger. All right, so that's a hybrid. Do we can yeah, if we get him in here. Let we'll let take a look. Let me see what you got. Not particularly large that's, fish. Just a little brown. Just a small brown. Just, just a small, small brown. brown. Yeah, that's good to see. We did exactly what uh, what Frank says they're going to do. You uh, you pause, you jerk that uh, jerk bait just a little bit, then you pause it, and uh, and they come right up and they smack it typically on the pause, and that's exactly what happened here. Now the White River is controlled by the Bull Shoals Dam, and it's very important to understand what's going on here. When the dam opens up the floodgates and lets water come down into the river, the river level rises. And as the river level rises, the fish go on a feed, and the bite can be very, very good. But then eventually they're gonna shut those gates off and they're gonna cut off the amount of water coming into the river. When the water level in the river starts to go down, the bite drops off dramatically. So what you see are peak periods of the day. When the water is rising, the fishing is extremely good. When the water is declining, the bite starts to taper off. So it's really important to time your fishing trip to be on the river when the water is actually rising. That's when you're gonna catch the most of these big brown trout. Just a little guy. Just a little brown. Good tell Lily got your little brown. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad is you that did sentence that. emphasis on little? Is that? <laughs> well, well, it's a blue, it's a brown. It's not all that impressive, but uh, well, it's a brown. But it is a brown trout. Look at the colors on that fish; just absolutely gorgeous. So I want to try and grab him here gently without getting those hooks in my hand here, and hold that out there. You see just how pretty these fish are, and he will grow into, believe it or not, 20, 22, 24, 25, 26 even as much as 27 inches or better. So they do grow some big ones here. This one's just not there yet. So we're gonna gently release him and uh, come back and catch him another time. Let's talk a little bit about timing. If you wanna come to the White River and you wanna catch these big browns on stick baits, prime time for this is gonna be February and March. If you get down here in those two months of the year, chances are you're gonna catch a brown of your lifetime. And right now I can get help a little down here, see if I can help you land that fish. Well, the trick to, here's something people don't realize, the trick to landing fish in a river, always keep them up river. That's why you had trouble with them last time. It's hard to land them down river. You always want to keep that thing up river the best that you can. All right. Well, I haven't laid eyes on this thing. Is it a good looking fish? Uh, well, yeah, I think it's foul hooked though, but that's why it's fighting like this. It's not fighting. He's not shaking his head. Not shaking his head, I hear you. They're fun to fight like this. There he is. Oh, I see him now. Ah, oh, I see him. We'll be on him. You get him in close here and we'll, uh, we'll get him. There he goes. Let him get him to spun around on you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good looking fish. 
That's a real got some, good looking fish. Got some weight to him. There we got him. <laughs> All right. Frank, <laughs> you are the man. That is a beautiful looking fish. Now, Frank, that's a beautiful fish, but I'm guessing that that's a little bit better than average, or you? Not uh, average, yeah. Good, oh, average, good average, okay. yeah. I mean, well, there's, there's a lot of places you would not catch oh, a brown no. trout like that. I get spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> you are spoiled. Look around. I mean, this place yeah. is God's country. It's beautiful. And you catch them on stick baits, you catch them on jigs. There's a lot of ways to catch these fish, but <laughs> stick bait is my favorite. Well, and you know what I like about it? I like the fact that uh, they got to be 24 inches before you can yeah. keep one, right? Yeah, right? So most of these fish go back, so everybody gets to enjoy exactly them. Exactly right. So yeah. that's where this boy's perfect. going. All righty. <laughs> you done good. You done Here good. Go. <laughs> My name is Mark Romanak, and I hope you enjoyed this week's episode on the White River in Arkansas. This place is gorgeous. It's a beautiful place to bring your family and friends to catch a lot of fish. We'll see you here, same time, same place, next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Well, not time. quite ready, is he? No, not ready. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. That's a good <laughs> Man, I feel like I'm on top of the world right now.